Okay. So we start. Okay, now uh first of all I like to thank the Lord for everything from my, our family. Secondly, I like to thank all of you for your donations to uh to the uh to the needs of the people of the Philippines. This is for the Philippines. And so thank you so much for everybody. Thank you guys for the 450 that you guys donate to for our outreach. So starting last Monday, when the money came in, I was able to get the money out and then the we start do the uh, shopping and packing and buying. Everybody can, uh, all the family can have. But the main thing is we are targeting eight, 80 families actually. <coughs> Last week we did the, the the first outreach, but yesterday it's into a different location. Uh, in a different location actually, and so we were able to pack the grocery package for any family, but we go beyond that, and there's also other small donations coming from the other people. So we combine everything together. And we pack things together, and then uh, by yesterday morning, early early morning in the morning, we were able to go to the place there in Mantalubang, uh, Ijal province. It's just like an uh, hour or hour and a half away from Manila City, where the, the water dam, they call it Wawa, Wawa Water Dam, overflow and flood the, the other side of the, the city. And so we were able to respond to the people there who have big needs. But uh, the idea is to go beyond to the place where where the team or the uh, government responding team cannot reach, or sometimes they don't like to go there. So that's where we our target yesterday. And so that's where we go yesterday. We walk for uh, 25 to 30 minutes by carrying the uh, the stuff. From the car to the to the place where the boat, not the boat, the kayak, small boat. That's the one you will carry us for another another 30, I don't know, 15 minutes to, to the uh, to the place where we go to do the uh, the grocery giving out. But the thing is, <clears throat> I was surprised though because it, the place there doesn't. Nobody likes to go there because actually it's a rebel's place and we don't know the pastor that who facilitate everything never told us in the first place. So, but I think he was uh, sure that uh, our safety is okay. So he was pretty much uh, confident that he can bring us there. So we go there, bring everything out and share the gospel and share the uh, giving out the packets, the grocery packets, and then we came back, when we came back to the car, that's the time he told us where we're going. And also he warned us not to post a lot of pictures in the Facebook and reveal the location of the place, the, the community name of the place, the village name of the place, because of the safety of the people. And of, of course it's him, it's not our safety, it's him because if the government, got, you know, if the government, uh, 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 arrest those people or the boss the uh, rebels can probably the pastor is the one to pay the price so so that's why he was warning us not to reveal the location of the uh, the village the name but the thing is i was so you know i got scared today but i was so overwhelmed because i never thought that uh, you know my own people my fellow island yakis palawan and my fellow uh, micronation to be able to be a part of what I'm doing here in the Philippines, sharing and, and, and meeting the needs of the people. So it's really blessed me, but of course I was a little bit concerned and afraid when I find out 
where I was. Because I was with my wife, my wife also joining our team, and we don't know much of, we don't know much uh, about that place. But at the same time, we're praying, and I say, Lord, thank you for bringing us there and bringing us back safe and sound. But I was overwhelmed because of the uh, the connection that we have, and also the responding from you guys to the news that we have here, knowing that I came from the small island of Pia. Uh, Good family, and yet here we are. We are responding to a bigger needs, bigger needs to the uh, greater needs. I would say that that's an international scale outreach. I would say that. So we are a big part, even a big part of the of the of God's of God's work. Uh, though you are not there, but of course. You're, you're a part of it. All of you are part of it as a church, as a family, and as a peace people, as an island of people who are proud. So I'm very, very proud and happy about that. I was sharing this to my wife yesterday, last night, and I was like, you know what? I never thought that after 10 years or 11 years in the Philippines, my own people will come along, support me for this. It's not about giving the package to the need of people. But it's about bringing the gospel into an area where the people don't like to go or where the government don't like to go because they're pretty much worried about their safety of the place. But I believe that it is God sometimes used the disaster situation to bring the gospel into those area by using us. We are nothing. We are nothing. Look who we are. We just came from, we are from Yap. Where is Yap? It's not in the... It's not in the map, but yet we respond. We become a part of a big, big, big calling. God's calling. So uh, I was proud. I was so happy today uh, to do this. But you know, I, I thank you guys so much for helping. I was very, very grateful. Uh, I never thought that uh, my own people will come alongside with me. I've been here for more than 10 years, and, and more in this time, I see how God's working by connecting me with a lot of people. But but again, it's all God's work, it's all God's calling. Our job is to respond to the needs, whatever we have. It's not about the big amount, but it's about our heart and how we respond. Our obedience is more important than how we praise the Lord. Our obedience is more important. So I was very, very blessed yesterday, and uh, I, I, I wasn't here yesterday, actually, and I say, how about if I die, and I say, dying is not a problem. In God's word, it's what matters more. But what I'm happy about is to connect us, for all of us to be able to respond to the needs. That's a big need, big, big scale. Uh, Greater pain, a greater need. So uh, I thank God for for all of us here. And also the church, the uh, Waterwell Church, right? Fisherman Church. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I think you know. Thank you guys so much. Uh, it doesn't matter, but you know we call it Island Church. So. Fisherman Church or Millite Church, anyway, but anyway, we respond to the need, and that is what most, what most better. Because you know, when we get there to the people, we, what we do is we never go to the house. We just stay at the side of the river, and then the whole community came down to uh, to get the need. So that's how we give out things. But it's not about again. It's not about how we give. But it's our presence to those people there. They were able to recognize that there are people outside who love them. That's the important thing. It's not about give, but it's about our presence there, so that they recognize how we love them, even though we don't know them. <clears throat> but you know, the MPA. Let me give you a little bit of background about the People's Army. They call it that. Uh, and PA, they're the one they're fighting the government. Uh, uh, they don't like the idea, some of the uh, government's ideas, so they're the one they're fighting. Some people call them communist people, communist uh, people call them rebel. But a lot of them since last year in this year, a lot of them lay down their weapon 
and turned himself into the government. And I believe one, one of the reasons why those people start turning them in is because of the gospel, that there are many people walk there or go there by themselves just to share the gospel, bringing hope to those people. So that's why they lay down their, their weapon and turn themselves into the government so that they can become, you know, become useful, what I say. But, but the thing is, I believe it is God's work. Sometimes God, I believe that sometimes God used the disaster to bring his work into those areas. For example, okay. like this, because we cannot depend on the government to go themselves. We as a, you know, uh, citizenship we also really need to be respond, make, to do our part by helping those people. But that's how God's work. God's work in a mysterious way. We all know that. The, the thing is, we need to respond and not to be more, more not to be much more concerned about our safety or about our family. When we respond to God's calling in need, we can see the fruits. People will come to the gospel. So I believe there is another reason why God is using this kind of particular uh, term outreach to reach to the people, but it's not about giving. I believe if we did not go there, still they can survive, but our presence there can bring hope into their life and love and see the beauty of Jesus in us so that we go there. So that's how the people sometimes respond to the gospel in a different way. <clears throat> so again, thank you guys so much. Uh, uh, it's it's also teach me a lot and bless me and my wife, especially my wife. My wife also was blessed because this is the first time we see our people respond to help her people also. So she was so blessed also. And, but I see how God used your church in Guam to respond to the needs of the people. And that is what's really, really important. And I hope that uh, what you do bless other people also. Again, it's not about us, but it's about helping people so thank you guys so much for your contribution. Thank you very, very much. Uh, we're not having another plan to go this time because next week is already December, so we are really busy. But at the same time, we're trying to protect ourselves for this pandemic, COVID-19, because we're still under uh, lockdown here this time. So it's still dangerous. A lot of people here also still get sick and in the hospital. So, so again, thank you guys so much, and thank you, James, for for donating everything and and and, and helping Paul and, and also Victor and, and and everybody around. Thank you guys so much. Uh, I I hope I can just visit you guys right away, but you know, things are getting difficult this time. For, by traveling to Guam or coming back to Guam. I don't like to end up the 40 days in the quarantine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but please, instruct you need to include me and my family in your prayer, uh, whatever you, whenever you remember me, just pray for me. I hope I can make it back to Guam next week. Uh, and also my family here. Yeah, all our ministry here this time has been cut off because of this lockdown, but we're trying to make it safe this time. So this is our first uh, outreach of the year, and actually we're only one month away in this year is finished. So, but anyway, it's all God's plan and work happening in us. But I'm so thankful and grateful for you guys for helping me. Uh, thank you, James. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you, Brother Mike. Uh, uh, brothers, thank you so much for getting fun. Uh, I, I just like to pray for you, all of us here. Is that possible? Oh, yeah. Hold on. Boy, Captain, uh, is it a mute here or what? I can hear you also. Uh, I can hear you. Okay. For uh, Mike Ray, can I just yeah, say something? I so, you, uh, yeah. Yeah. Brother Mike was uh, also sharing 
how the even uh, with the outreach, uh, part of it was to go barefoot the muddy place to get to the place where they were bringing the gospel. And then the other part of it, like he said, was he didn't know that this place was the rebel place. So he said one of the good things was if the pastor who was coordinating the, the outreach there had told them, most likely he would not go or they would not go. Uh, because yeah, exactly. of the, yeah, so uh, he did, they, they, they weren't informed until after the outreach, uh, as they were coming back to the car, uh, that the pastor told them, uh, of course, also told them not to take, uh, they can take pictures, but they cannot post the uh, pictures on media uh, because of the, uh, it's the dangers of uh, posting it. And uh, But he said that when they came back to the car, that's when they were, were informed of, uh, you know, the place that they just went. And one of the things that Brother Mike also said was that uh, uh, people rarely go to that place. Uh, one, because maybe of the, the how to get there and also how dangerous it is. Very rare that they have, uh, this is the first time in a long time, Brother Mike said that a group uh, of missionaries or people who went there for outreach. And uh, and so I think about the, the gospel, the, the word of Jesus Christ that, you know, he said when the when the gospel reached the four corners of the earth and you will return, if there's anything that's delaying the, the return of Christ, it's the gospel, the unreaching. And, and to hear the story, I think it is also, so I just wanted to ask that, uh, man, just uh, we're being part of helping uh, getting the gospel out into the unreached, which means that it's yeah. the return of Christ is, is getting closer and closer. And so I also want to just thank all the brothers for continuing to be faithful in your prayer. But also in giving of your uh, tithe. And so we were able uh, we were able to give $450. Uh, U.S. dollars into this outreach that Brother Mike and his family and also have contributed toward this outreach. So, I mean, we may be uh, from the island, it's small in numbers, or uh, but we serve a big God, and so I just that's part of why I wanted us to get on the track and just uh, let him be able to share with us. And I don't know when I heard it here, I cried. I just I, I was in tears and uh, just to see how God would. And we don't even know, and we would maybe never even meet those people that. Brother Mike was uh, and the group were able to go and reach, but uh, uh, just the fact that you and I and each one of us have allowed God to use us and, and just to be a part of the mission uh, work uh, to reach the gospel. Because, like Brother, Mike, I was, you know, we were sharing earlier, you know, the the, the, the people that went there, the, the 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 groceries they brought, and uh, the gospel that went, all are part of the gospel. Uh, because attached to one of the, each one of those grocery bags is the love you know that represent the love of Christ is into those people uh whoever receive it and so again i just want to thank each one of you especially as brother mike said that in times like this uh time of disaster through this pandemic the god is still moving it's a matter of us just continuing to join him and uh, it's not about where we're from it's a, it's not about the name of our fellowship or is this the i mean the just the being humble to know that God would also use us to be a part of something that's far bigger than us. And we never know uh, people that maybe would give their life to Jesus Christ, even when it's all. And so, Brother Mike, we, we thank you for what you're doing in the Philippines, and you and your wife and your team over there. And, uh, man, it's the least we can do to be a part of, uh, of the work that God is doing over there. And we're excited for what he's doing in you and through you. And, and, and through the mission work over there, and uh, to the brothers, thank you again for uh, continuing to be faithful to the Lord. And uh, I believe the best is yet to come. And uh, this is of uh, of what the Lord uh, can do and will do for the Lord. And so, God, uh, we see all the glory and all the honor. And so again, I just. I just wanted to, that's one of why I want us to just wait in this chat. Hopefully, a little boost our spirit of the goodness of God, and uh, God is good. And uh, thank you. Continue to be obedient, and let's continue to uh, seek the Lord and, and be a part of this, uh, of spreading the gospel, the good news to the lost and dying world around us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, James. Thank you. Okay. Amen, amen. Okay, so uh, thank you guys. I will just pray for the prayer.
Mike, and your three boys serving the Lord, so that's the fruit of your ministry there. Anybody else? Hello. Owen, Robert, Pep. Anybody in there? Is there, can you guys hear me? Uh, thank you, brother, brother Mike, you know, for uh, 
My heart uh, goes out to you, man. I don't know. We used to have to you know. I, I don't know much about the Philippines, but I've been told a lot. And even myself here in Guam, like even driving around and go big people is uh, something now that you know it's really scary. So I, I think I still need to you know walk uh, walk uh, you know, in the face. But uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for all the things that you have done. Uh, you know the three boys that put there. Man, I'm so overwhelmed of all the things that they've been doing here in Guam. You know, I knew I, I them not too long ago before they moved to, to the ministry, the, the PI, but when you know it, they're just they're so, like three different, three different like, young brothers. Two different Thank you so much for that. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, that was, uh, that was, uh, that was, <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> <laughs>